Endeavor. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And it'll be done on a live mic. Spain. We're ready. You should be talking to the daily. This is Houston. Please call Endeavor for a voice check. Endeavor, this is Elizabeth Saab with the daily. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear, Elizabeth. How do you hear us? Great. Good morning. I just want to start by saying that a lot of the questions we'll be asking you were submitted from people all over the world. And uh, many of them, before we get started, just want to say sending you guys well wishes for your crew's safe return and also, uh, Commander Kelly, many well wishes for the continuing recovery of your wife, Congresswoman Giffords. With that, I'll get into it. Um, Luke, age seven, from Tennessee, wants to know, Commander Kelly, how fast do you uh, travel on launch and uh, return, and how fast do you guys travel in orbit? So on liftoff, we obviously start on the pad, and we go from zero to 17,500 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. And then we pretty much stay at that speed for us for about 16 days. And then to get home, all that energy we put in on liftoff, we have to take back out. But instead of doing it in eight and a half minutes, we'll slow down over a period of about 40 minutes or so, where we'll then glide to a landing in Florida. And uh, Haldor from Iceland wants to know, uh, mission specialist uh, Fink, describe what you see in space in one word. Beautiful planet Earth. <laughs> That's great. Uh, for mission specialist uh, Chamatop, Courtney from Texas wants to know, has there ever been a moment in all of your space career where all of those hours of training hadn't quite prepared you for it? For example, the other day when your spacewalk was cut short. You know, I think, in fact, um, probably the opposite. I mean, the, probably the most intense thing I have ever done is that spacewalk a few days ago. And, um, you know, it's such an overwhelming sensation to be out there and to see the Earth between your legs 220 miles below and in every other direction, you know, trillions of miles to the next thing, uh, you know, unless it's the sun, which is a little closer. But, um, uh, you know, the training is so good that, that you know, we just focus on uh, our next step. And we, 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 uh, wherever we are, we kind of know exactly what to do at the next step. And, uh, and uh, you know, with so many things that we thought about in, in terms of contingencies. Uh, in fact, you know, the alarm that I got in my suit, um, it may have sounded like a... You know something of concern to the to you know the the audience listening on NASA TV, but I was expecting that alarm because uh, we already knew that that suit had a potential problem like that, and and we knew exactly what we were going to do. So uh, training is really terrific to prepare us for everything up here. And uh, the next question for Commander Kelly Brandy from Oklahoma wants to know what's your favorite pastime in space that you cannot do here on Earth. Well, I think it has to be, for me, is just flying through the space station. Uh, when you leave the airlock of the space shuttle from one end of the space station to the other, it takes a couple minutes. You know, maybe not that, depends on how fast you go, obviously, but it's uh, really an amazing experience to just fly through a module. So it's it's not described exactly as floating. I mean, you're literally you know, flying through the air, and that's, you know, I could do that all day, every day, if I had the chance. What does that mean? Next question for mission specialist Fink, who is your uh, space hero and why? Well, Elizabeth, I can't pick one. I think uh, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. Each mission we get uh, better, we go a little bit uh, farther on in exploration. So I think uh, my space heroes are all the crews that came before us. And uh, hopefully we can uh, provide adequate shoulders for the crews that come after us. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have uh, now. But thanks so much, um, you guys. We wish you a safe return home. and. Um, continued exploration in space. Thanks so much again. Thanks. Goodbye. Endeavor, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the daily portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from News Radio KDKA.
McDonald's and Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme shares surged over 25% as their income doubled from a year ago. So America's formula for overcoming the recession, John, appears to be eat more, save less, and wait for the end of the world now rescheduled for October. That's where we'll begin the financial day. Money Talk with certified financial planner Rick Applegate, president of First Commonwealth Financial Advisors and affiliate of First Commonwealth on News Radio 1020 KDKA. Well, let's check in with our friends up in space this morning. Endeavor, this is News Radio 1020 KDKA. How do you hear me? News Radio 1020 KDKA, this is the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Mike Fink speaking. How you ins doing? <laughs> Mike, it's great to hear your voice from space. Hey, you know, you finally got the opportunity after all your time in space to go up there on board the space shuttle. How was it for the ride? Well, it was an amazing launch. We uh, were sitting there in Florida. The clouds were coming over. We were wondering if we were going to get canceled because of weather. And then the clouds uh, gently dissipated. And eight and a half minutes later, uh, with a big kick in the pants, we were up in space. And boy, was it amazing. Not everyone who uh, is on board the shuttle at the time has a great view out the window. But I understand you did have a view out the window. And how did it look? Yeah, I was lucky to uh, sit up on the flight deck. I was sitting behind uh, pilot uh, Box Johnson, and I could see out his window. And uh, it's different than my earlier missions when I flew on the Soyuz, because we were in the payload shroud, so we couldn't see anything for a long time. But here, we could see the clouds race by. We could see uh, the beautiful planet get smaller and smaller, and it was a really amazing sight. You have logged so many hours on spacewalks. Uh, you doing any of that this time around? You bet. In fact, uh, we just uh, finished getting ready for tomorrow's spacewalk. Our crew so far has done uh, two successful spacewalks, and we got uh, two more to go. And um, I just came back from one uh, two days ago, and then we get to go out tomorrow. It's uh, one thing after another on a shuttle mission. Commander Mark Kelly, i got to ask you, uh, the local boy there from Emsworth, how is, uh, how's Mike Fink doing on that maiden voyage on board the space shuttle? He's doing great. You know, it's uh, it's really nice to have both Mike and Greg, who have spent so much time on the space station. Anytime, you know, I need to find something, I don't have to go look it up. I just ask one of them, and they've both been incredible crew members. Mike on the flight deck for Ascent did an outstanding job, and he's going to be on the flight deck here again for entry. So um, it's a pleasure to have him on, on board. Hey, Greg, can you give us a perspective on what it's like to be part of the final mission of Endeavor, realizing that when you all touch down, the next stop for the Endeavor is basically going to be a museum? Yeah, it's difficult for us to uh, think of it that way, you know, because uh, we're up here, the space station is, uh, you know, basically assembly complete at this point, and it's almost a million pounds of hardware. It's huge. I just uh, kind of like did a video tour the other day and flew through all the modules. There were 12 crew members on board and all these different modules filled with science equipment, and the shuttle is here, and, and you look at it from the cupola on the station, and you see this giant space shuttle attached at one end. It's just spectacular, you know, what we have up here and what we've accomplished up here and you, you know the space shuttle looks like it belongs right where it is you know this is a this is a beautiful machine it, it, it performs beautifully and it gets us up here and brings so much so much useful uh, science and payload to orbit and uh, and then back and uh, it's gonna be hard for us to you know to uh, put it away in a museum you know but it'll be it's it's the end of an era you know and uh, there'll be new vehicles to replace it and those new vehicles will hopefully allow us to go beyond low earth orbit and do new and greater things in the future so uh, it, you know the time has to come at some point mission specialist greg shamatoff uh, commander mark kelly and mission specialist and pittsburgh native emsworth native mike fink hey mike next time you're back in pittsburgh after the flight make sure you drop by the kdka studios and say hi absolutely uh, we'll certainly uh, get back to Pittsburgh as soon as I can. My parents are still there, and uh, we love coming up. It's one of the best cities in the entire planet. You all have a nice day. And you have a safe trip home. That is live from the International Space Station. It is 655. Endeavor, Endeavor, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the News Radio KDKA portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KTRK. Longest on record went nearly eight hours over the weekend. Endeavor, this is KTRK-TV. How do you hear me? 
Okay, you loud and clear. First time, actually, they've ever had someone come up and I mean, a Soyuz rocket come up in the middle of a space station and yeah. leave. All right, this morning we're getting a rare opportunity to talk to three of the crew members. And joining us live from the space station is the Endeavour Shuttle Commander, Mark Kelly, along with mission specialist Mike Fink and Greg Chamatoff. Gentlemen, good morning. What's it feel like to be in space again? Good morning, Tom. Well, it's always a great day when you're in orbit around the Earth. Uh, it's been a while, you know, for me, three years since I, I was last in space and really enjoying the flight, and it's going well. Well, I know you guys have a lot on tap for this particular mission with, of course, you know, you're going to have another spacewalk when it comes to installing that filter inside the, the oxygen generation system, and you've got a lot of work ahead. But is it also kind of bittersweet knowing that this is it when it comes to the Space Shuttle Endeavor? This is that final mission. Yeah, this is it for Endeavor. After we land the uh, back in Florida, hopefully, um, Endeavor will head off to a museum, so it's kind of sad. Uh, but this mission still, I mean, we're halfway through it today, and Endeavor has to perform really, really well for us, and it has so far. Uh, this is an incredible ship. We're all going to be sorry to see them retired, but we're also looking forward to, uh, you know, exploration and the United States and maybe our international partners going to other destinations like back to the moon or maybe one day going to Mars. We're looking forward to that. Well, gentlemen, we have actually run out of time this morning. We wish you the best, and I know, Mike, you'll be out on that uh, spacewalk in just a short time. So good luck with that. Have a great time in space, and we'll see you when you get back on Earth. All right, Tom, we'll see you then. Great talking to you. Endeavor, Houston ACR. That concludes the KTRK portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Endeavor, this is the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. How do you hear me? Good morning, Rachel. This is uh, Mike Fink aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. We hear you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Great. Hi, Colonel Fink. I'll start with you. How does it feel to be part of Endeavour's last mission and the second to last flight in the shuttle program? You know, I always, you know, I was a, a little kid back in the Berg, back in Pittsburgh, and I just really always wanted to fly in the space shuttle. And my NASA career took me to go fly in space for a whole year, uh, flying with the Russians before I had a chance to fly on the space shuttle. And I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it was worth the wait. Endeavor's a beautiful bird. It's uh, taking us uh, through our mission uh, step by step. Very, very few problems, if any, and uh, we're having a great mission. So that's what I'm concentrating on. And sure, it's bittersweet that this is Endeavor's last uh, last mission, but uh, she's doing great and she saved her best for last. Great. Now, uh, Colonel Fink, I know you're high on the list of the people who have had the most time logged in space. How does it feel to be back up there? Well, space, it's a, it's a great place. We see our beautiful uh, planet Earth below, and uh, we can fly like uh, Superman throughout the whole space station and, and here in the shuttle. And uh, we, all, we all love it very much to be here, and I'm very privileged to have a chance to come on back. Great. Now, I know you've done two spacewalks so far. Um, how did they go, and can you tell us a little bit about what you did? Certainly. Our crew has uh, done uh, two spacewalks so far. We have two more to go. Uh, the first one, we had uh, Greg, uh, who's standing right next to me, along with, uh, with Drew Foistel, and uh, they did some uh, very important work to uh, take some science experiments back in and uh, get ready and help uh, one of our communication systems uh, get an upgrade, so to speak. And uh, on our second spacewalk, we did some long-term improvements uh, for the space station so that it could last uh, till its planned life of 2020 and perhaps beyond. So tomorrow we're going to put a, uh, some, some uh, cabling out to uh, give the Russian uh, part of the space station some more power. And on our last spacewalk, uh, Dr. Shamatov and I will go out and leave a very long uh, truss, or I guess it's a, a beam on the outside that we can pick up with a robot arm and help inspect the space station or put a person at the end in case we need some extra reach. So it's really exciting. A lot of things are uh, going on. Spacewalks are really tough. And, uh, but we got a great crew, so we can do it. Great, guys. Thanks so much for your time. 
Nice to hear you, and a big hello to everyone back in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Endeavor, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you all. Hey, we'd like to thank the uh, Daily News Radio KDKA, KTRK TV, and the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Endeavor, we are now resuming operational audio communications, and Spanky, you missed a great opportunity to list me as your hero.